Christmas greetings. Hello, hello. Hello. Okay, so another screening of the Breast Archives. I'm so proud and thrilled to be here. I was here in February giving a keynote speech about the origins of this film, and I think understandably, Lori and Vitek were like, I think we should have this film be shown here. And what a wonderful venue. It's perfect. Um, the origins of the film, I might as well tell you, since I referenced it, are on the Nile. It's an interesting story. I got this kind of download that the breasts contain an ancient wisdom, and I couldn't quite shake it, and I decided to ask with it. Do your breasts contain an ancient wisdom or some kind of a primordial intelligence? And if so, can you say anything about it? And women are like, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about it. I don't know what I'm going to say, but I can talk about it. So it, it, it was the first of many signs that I had sort of stumbled into something. And as it turns out, breast stories are really a treasure trove of women's experience of themselves in a very unique way. Breasts are taboo in this culture. They're truly an abyss, really. A terrible abyss, a wonderful abyss, but it's a place of great fear. When have you been to a public American beach and seen a baby girl running around in the surf without a bikini top on? It is not okay in this culture now for a girl just to be without a top, even if she's two. Literally, it's a very strange phenomenon. And once you start to notice these things in our culture, you start to realize there is a, a kind of an in inexplicable fear of the mammary gland and the creatureliness it represents. And, and I'm sure there's 15 theories about what it might mean, but it's just interesting for sure. So we're going to wet your whistles with some poetry before the film. Okay, I just want to start with kind of the elephant in the room, which is who would have the gumption to take off your top and be interviewed for a film that maybe a million people would see? <laughs> Very brave. Hooray for these wonderful women. And I wanted to ask, sort of, was it bizarre? Was it scary? Was it weird? Was it freeing? What was it then? What is it now? I think it changes from generation to generation. There was my generation, we sort of wore baggy sweaters and, and hid, and I see that my nieces are very much the, you can see the little bit, bit of lingerie, and their, their breasts are hanging out, and I think it's their way of being in control. They get out in front of it and saying, here, this is my breasts, you see my breasts? Don't mess with me. Whereas we wore baggy shirts and said, don't mess with me. So it's a different expression of trying to be in control. I mean, you're not, you don't have the power, so you're always at a disadvantage as a woman in, in, in patriarchy. We're kind of doing the best we can, and it's a case-by-case -case kind of situation. I think we're generation, certainly generation to generation. But I think, at this point now, it has to start with us as individuals. We have to sort of stake a claim. And I use the word pride very right. intentionally because, you know, oh, it's so bad if you're a woman that's too proud and she's so proud. It's like it becomes this taboo. God forbid we take pride in our feminine form. But I think that's one thing to begin with is to, whether you wear a bra or not, just to sort of stand up, you know, just take pride in your breasts and reclaim them if you haven't yet. It's never too late. And teach your children of both, of both genders. Yes. I think you're very accurate that it changed a generation, and obviously person to person, because everybody's Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Thank you so very much.